Kotokoto, this is the second starter question that I'm going to do in class on the 13th of June. And this one is, you can see from the marks, is quite involved. It's 11 marks worth, so that's 11 out of 75. So that's a, quite a decent chunk of time. You guys can work that out. I'm a little bit sleepy. Um, I'm going to read through the whole question first to make sure that you've got the hang of it. And then I want to talk about part B a bit as well before we dive in. So please just be patient, or if you can't be patient, just put me on double speed like a rabbit or a chicken. Okay, so we've got a diagram here, and I want you to just notice a few things before we get going. You can see we've got the origin here, and we've got pi on 2 here. Now that's quite a useful clue for the first part. Um, there's a curve which is y is equal to sine x cos of 2x, and its maximum point is m. So you can kind of guess the question before you even read it. We have to figure out um, just the x coordinate of point m, and we have to give our answer to three significant figures. So not an exact value thing for that. Now that's worth six marks. I reckon that's actually a reasonably easy six marks if your trig equations are good. Then the second part is five marks, and it says to use the substitution u equals cos x to find the area of the shaded region enclosed by the curve and the x-axis in the first quadrant. In other words, this is the first quadrant here, right? So what we're looking for here is the area of the shaded region. So the first question that we're going to have to figure out is what is the limit of integration here? That means that we're going to have to solve this to get values for um, y equals zero. And we have to give our answer in a simplified exact form. So it definitely felt to me like the first six marks were pretty easy. The last five, you have to do a bit of work for them. Now, it says to use the substitution u equals cos of x. When I got to the question, I was much happier just getting on with it and doing the integration using the reverse chain rule. I think those of you who are going really well with your work so far probably are going to have the same reaction. But because it says substitution, we've got to use substitution. So in the work solutions that I'm going to post to Google Classroom, I've done it both ways so that you can see that if you just had this question, say, in a level three calculus paper and it didn't tell you to do substitution, you could actually do it either way. OK, so let's get on with the first part. We have to find the x coordinate of m. Right, so we've got y is equal to sine x times cos of 2x, so we're going to need to use the product rule. The first thing that I'm going to do is differentiate with respect to x, and then set that equal to 0. So it's going to be sine of x times the derivative of this function, which is going to be, um, I'll go really slowly, so it's going to be negative sine 2x, but now I need the derivative of the inside function, which is 2 and now I'm doing the second half of my product rule. So this is u and this is v. So I've done, this is u v dash. And now I'm doing the other way around. So it's plus cos of 2x times cos of x. So let's just clean that up before we do anything else. So we get negative. Um, let's have a wee look. I'm going to go really slowly. Okay, so it's going to be negative 2 sine x sine of 2x plus cos of 2x, cos of x. And that has to equal 0 for a stationary point. And some kind of communication like that's important. Now let's think about how we're going to solve this trig equation. Well, we've got x's and 2x's flying around. Um, we've got a cos of 2x here. We could do one of three things with that. However, there's only one thing to do with the sine of 2x. So let's do that first and see what that suggests to do next. Well, that will give me negative 4 sine x, sine x, cos x, plus cos of x, cos of 2x, equals 0. So looking at that already, I've got um, a cos of x common factor here, and I've got a cos of x common factor here, and I've got a choice for what to do here. But you can see that here I've got a sine squared, so I think I'm going to choose 1 minus 2 sine squared x here. We'll see if that works. So we get negative 4 cos x sine squared x plus cos of x 1 minus 2 sine squared x equals 0. Um, cleaning that up gives me negative 4 cos x sine squared x plus cos x minus another 2 sine squared x cos x is equal to 0, which gives me cos of x minus 6 of these. So that's going to be 1 minus 6 sine squared x is equal to 0. 
that means that either cos of x is equal to 0 or 1 is equal to 6 sine squared x. So think about your cosine curve. This gives me a solution of x is equal to pi on 2. But we know from the graph that x must be less than pi on 2. So at point m, x is less than pi on 2. So this is not a solution. Um, that means that we must have sine squared of x is equal to 1 sixth. And we know that sine of x must be the positive root of that. So it's going to be just this. And we're looking for the value between 0 and pi on 2. So somewhere in here. So we get x is equal to sine inverse of 1 on root 6, which gets me in radians 0 0.421 to three significant figures. Okay, so that's the first six marks. Wow, pretty easy for six marks, really, compared to some six marks. Now let's look at the second bit. So the first thing that we've got to do to find the area is to find this point here. We know that the curve is y is equal to sine x cos of 2x. We need that to equal 0. Either sine x is equal to 0 or cos of 2x is equal to 0. Now we know that x must equal 0. So we're looking for values of x between pi on 2 and 0. So not a solution. So that's not going to be my limit of integration. Cos of 2x equals 0. Let's see what we get. Right, so cos of pi on 2 is going to be 0. So we get 2x is equal to pi on 2. x is equal to pi on 4. And that's going to be my limit. So now we're ready to start. What we're going to do is we need to find this integral from pi on 4 to 0 of sine x cos of 2x dx. Now we've been told that we have to use a substitution and we've been told what it is even, which is kind of cool. We don't have to go hunting. Um, just gonna do, I'm going to do this the, right, the way the exam wants first and then I'm going to do it my way, which is just backwards chain rule. Before I do this u substitution though, we know that we're going to sub out this cos of 2x, right? We really don't like it. So I am going to substitute out because I've been told to use cos of x for my substitution. That's the version of the double angle that I'll use. So pi on 4 to 0 sine of x times 2 cos squared x minus 1 dx. And I can do a bit of really easy integration here, so I'm not going to do my substitution just yet. We've got 2 sine x cos squared x dx minus, now this is just minus sine of x, so we can go straight to integrating that and say that this must be negative cos of x between pi on 4 and 0. So let's just figure out what that is. What have we got? Mm, I'll write this out again and then we'll do the u substitution. 2 sine x cos squared x dx plus, right, so it's a plus because of those two, cos of pi on 4 is 1 on root 2 minus cos of 0 which is 1. Okay, let u equal cos of x. The next step is to differentiate. And that gives me negative sine x dx. Now the reason I want to do that is that this is going to be replaced with u's. We're going to have to deal with these. But that leaves me with this pain in the neck sine x dx. But you can see that I've got it nearly matching up here. Now there's a tiny mistake in there. The first thing to do is just to do the differentiation and we get this. Now we're going to... Um, rearrange this to get du is equal to negative sine x dx. Now I know some of you are probably still feeling a little bit funny about this step where we're treating this as an ordinary fraction. Um, we're going to do that again when we get to differential equations, right? So it comes up quite often and it's a completely legitimate thing to do, but I haven't really done any proper teaching on that just yet. So just for now, I know that feels like hand-waving, um, just get on with it and do it, and I promise I'll come back and try and explain why we can do that um, in a couple of weeks' time when hopefully things are back to normal again at school. Okay, 
So now we're ready to go here, except we have to do these switchovers on the limits. So x is equal to pi on 4 or 0, but u is equal to cos of x. So we change these limits and we get 1 on root 2 here, and we get 1 here. So that means that this integral is now equal to the integral between 1 on root 2 and 1. And then I'm going to have 2 times negative u squared du, right? u squared because of that. And then this thing here, sine x dx, is du. And so, sorry, sine x dx is negative u. Right, and then I've got plus the bit that I've already worked out. And you can see now that this is a really, really easy integration. It's just negative two-thirds u cubed evaluated at these limits. Right, that gives me negative two-thirds times, right, one on root two cubed is two root two minus negative two-thirds times one plus one on root two take away one. That gives me negative one on three root two plus two-thirds minus one. So that's going to be negative one-third plus one on root two. Let's see, have I done that right? I think I have, yep, okay. Now, you could leave it like that, but we can do quite a bit of cleaning up. Um, you can see that we've got this here and this here. So we've got negative one-third plus one on root two minus one on three root two. If I times this by three, now I've got negative one on three. So three lots of that take away one lot gives me plus two lots of three on root two. Um, that's definitely fine for an answer. I'm trying to get it into the form that it's in the mark schedule in case any of you are, are using that to check. And in here, um, we could get on with taking out the one third as the common factor. Two on root two is just root two minus one. So that's where we get to. I'm really quickly going to show you now how I would have done that myself if I wasn't stuck in a painful exam where it said um, do a U substitution. I've got two more minutes on the video. So suppose that we get to the step here and I've got it down to 2 sine x cos squared of x dx. And then I've worked out the little easy integral. Well, what I see, as soon as I see this, um, hopefully you'll see this too, is you can see that you've got a squared thing here, and you've got its derivative kind of sitting out here. So this is a backwards chain rule, right? So this is f dash of x, or actually negative f dash of x. And this is f of x squared. So let's just get on with doing the chain rule on it right backwards. It's going to be 2 times um, 1 third cos cubed of x times negative 1. Right, now the reason I need the negative 1 is to remember that the derivative of cosine is not sine, it's negative sine. So when I differentiate this, this is going to generate 1 third times 3 cos squared of x, but then it's going to be times negative sine x, and we don't want the negative sine x, we just want the positive sine x. Anyway, um, if you need more practice at those, there is heaps of practice on Dr. Frost, and there's a bit of practice in, there's not that much in the A-level book, but there's tons in the old Delta book. So then we can just work it out, right? And you'll get um, negative two-thirds times one on root two cubed minus negative two-thirds times one cubed. Okay, so we get done to the same thing, and we get this so much faster than doing the U substitution. Okay, but they ask for a U substitution, so you just kind of have to get on with it and do it. Thanks for watching. Um, we will be going through this in class. This is the starter question for June the 13th, along with the parametric one.